Yeah. You want to be on 2K TV, right? You're on 2K TV right now. Yeah, yeah, look at it. 2K TV. Season 5 has arrived, and if you're looking to unleash the power within, then check out the following events. This weekend, aboard the Concha Del Mar, earn treasure at Gold Rush. All the VC you win in Annie Up will be used as your event score, and the winner will be dripping in gold. And in the city, make your way to Mobile One Grand Prix. You know the drill. Start your engines and finish the race for a chance to earn exclusive My Player items and unlimited block boosts. Next weekend, the Concha Del Mar hosts Dime Time, where you can win prizes by reaching the target number of assists. Meanwhile, the city will have the Adidas Basketball Open Run. Win on all four courts to receive 10,000 VC, free skill boosts, and exclusive My Player items. Plus, a new season means new apparel. Season 5 brings a unique Jordan collection featuring Rui Hachimura and some sweet gear from Dim Mach. That's it for me. Now get out there and channel the power within. Welcome to an all new episode of NBA 2K TV from Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm back here at the studio. All-Star is always one of my favorite times of the year. How's everything been, Alexis? Oh, it's been great. It's been cold. I can barely feel my hands. I'm barely speaking. My lips are blue right now. But the events were action-packed with players, fans, and, of course, NBA 2K. That sounds fun. But first, let's dive into Season 5 Power Within. It's live right now, and we have all the details for you. Your hunt for glory is over, but the next six weeks will summon the power within. Welcome to Season 5 of NBA 2K22. This may be the coolest season yet. A new artistic design adorns each affiliation. The perfect new backgrounds for you to showcase new emotes, animations, and clothing in all four affiliations and on board the Concha Del Mar. 40 new level prizes await as you compete to cement your legendary career. Size up defenders like Kyrie, pull spin jumpers like MJ, and dance on whoever gets in your way. You can flex on the competition with even more new emotes at levels 12, 16, 20, and 25. Don't embarrass anybody though, unless they really deserve it. Update your fit with free season five clothing item rewards at various levels. And looking for a new ride? Well, I'll just say you'll be getting a lift at level 30. Along the way, accelerate your level gains as you pick up double XP coins. Plus, make sure to head over to my team for a chance to earn Dark Matter Ray Allen for reaching level 40. And of course, don't forget, this is the season we'll be awarding $500,000 in the My Team Unlimited tournaments. You do not want to miss that. And hey, there are so many prizes to see, we won't spoil all the fun. We know you'll be scrolling through soon enough. Enjoy the new season, everyone, and make sure to send in those highlights to social with the hashtag 2KTVWOW. Now, go get level 40. I'll see you out there. There are events happening all over the city during All-Star Weekend. Our first stop, NBA Crossover, where basketball culture comes together through fashion, technology, and artists. And you never know who you might see. No, he's cheating. How are you at eight? I caught a game of Virtual Papa Shot with Jalen Suggs. What's on that device? Like automatic? <laughs> Green? And met up with artist Sue Sai. You may have seen her work in NBA 2K. So your artwork is in NBA 2K. Now, first, tell me how you found out that your artwork was in the game. So they had told me that it was possibly going to be in it when we were like creating all this um, the NBA designs. And then I actually found out through Twitter. Um, 
some guy like posted a screenshot and was like, oh my God, I can buy suits, high clothes in NBA 2K. And I, and I saw the screenshots of know it's super cool. Yeah, what did you yeah. think of it? It's amazing. Like I have so many friends that play 2K and it's just like, it's such a cool video game. And to be like, see my stuff in it, like in a digital form is, is super cool. All right, so what are we doing here today? I actually created this really cool paint by numbers piece. So I do these really cool limited edition basketballs that are like really colorful and fun. So this is kind of like a rendition of that, but it's obviously in black and white and then everyone can kind of, you know, work together to create the final piece. Well, thank you so much. This is awesome. I can't wait to see the final result. Thank you so much. And I'm excited too. the court the ball is feeling weird i'm not i'm not warmed up oh, i hear a lot of excuses so you have a chance to come beat alexis morgan from 2k tv and knock out get here right now you never know who's gonna show up in cleveland for all-star i'm doing a knockout challenge i didn't sign up for this my producer signed me up for this i'm very nervous try to miss like airball it make me look good make me look good okay, okay. Across town, we wrapped up the weekend with 2K taking center stage. What's your favorite mode to play on? Probably my career. And check out how Zach Levine's game stacks up in 2K22 versus the real world. All-Star Weekend did not disappoint. See you next year in Salt Lake City. You want to be on 2K TV, right? You're on 2K TV right now. Yeah, yeah, okay. We've been bringing you selects of our biographical series, Respect Your OGs, in honor of Black History Month. This week, we wrap it up with the story of NBA legend Bill Russell, told by Jalen Brown. When you talk about the idea that a basketball player can do more than just play basketball, there's no question that Bill Russell has to be at the center of that conversation. He's a true OG. I should probably start by making it clear what a baller he was. Russell played 13 seasons with the Celtics and he won 11 championships. That's almost impossible. But with Russell in the middle of everything, rebounding, blocking, passing, scoring, he made it possible. Ray Arback, the Celtics coach, was colorblind with the way he put together his teams. But the rest of the league and the country was a whole other story. Russell was called every awful name you've ever heard when he played. In 1961, the Celtics went to Kentucky for an exhibition game, and Bill and his black teammates were denied service at a restaurant. They decided to boycott the game. Even at home, outside of Boston, police trailed him when he drove through town. One time, his house was broken into and vandalized. His trophies were destroyed the N-word spray painted on the walls. But Bill wasn't intimidated by this hatred, and he wasn't going to let that kind of abuse deter his mission. And his courage lifted him to the forefront of a generation of black athletes who worked for change all across the country and the world. He went to Mississippi after the assassination of civil rights icon Medgar Evers and made a statement by running an all-integrated basketball clinic there. He campaigned for the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, and he was a leading voice for black athletes who believed in the fight against injustice. All these years after he won those 11 titles as a player, the last two as a team's player coach, by the way, I think the most important thing to understand about Bill Russell isn't just how hard he fought, but simply how he fought. He wrote books, articles, magazines. He educated himself and others about why the struggle was worth it. And what was the best way to fight it? Bringing so many others into the effort too. Maybe more than anything else, education was huge for Bill and symbolic too. His father's schoolhouse was burned down by racists and his daughter graduated from Harvard Law School. To this day, well into his 80s, Bill's still using his voice to teach and support our generation. And we're grateful for that. He's the model we should all aspire to emulate. He's the inspiration we still need every day. He's the reminder of why the fight is worth it. Let's get this game started right now. Hi, I'm 
Sean Pebbles, the PA announcer for the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you'll hear me call Cavs games right here on NBA 2K22. At guard, 6-1, number two, Colin Sexton. I've been a Cavs fan since I was 11 years old. And I'm actually still a partial season ticket holder with the Cavaliers through Wine and Gold United and have been for many years. So, you know, going from, you know, the upper level seats down to courtside, again, it's just that transfer of energy that I have for that organization and that team uh, just from up there down to the court. And I'm so honored and humbled to be a part of it with my family in Cleveland because that's what they are to me. At seven feet, starting at power forward, number 24, Lowry Markkinen. Growing up as a kid and watching the, the Cavs teams take on Jordan and the Bulls and all the heartbreak from back then, you're thinking, are we ever going to get our opportunity to, to be at the top of the mountain? And 2016, even going down three games to one, everyone was probably thinking the same thing. Well, okay, well, it's another good run, but, you know, we'll try again next year. We were at game four that night when the Cavs went down 3-1 in Cleveland. And my oldest daughter graduated from high school, and we went to Disney World for a trip to celebrate her graduation. So that's where we were on Father's Day on June 19th of 2016 when the Cavs won the championship. My girls have video of me just falling to my knees, and I just sat there just in silence and just let it soak in that they actually did it. I had a, just a Cavs basketball shirt on, and there were people all day long, complete strangers, high fives, fist bumps, hugs, just congratulating me and congratulating the Cavs. It was a special moment. And Obviously, the city is completely transformed because of that ring. Jared Allen with the dunk. I started out in the NBA, what was now called the G League, but back then in the in 2008, 2009, it was the D League in my hometown of Erie, Pennsylvania. I was the full-time public address announcer for the Bayhawks in Erie, and obviously that experience led me to September of 2017 when I found out about the Cavalier opportunity. Lo and behold, in the beginning of October, I got the call that, that they selected me to be the public address announcer for the Cavs, and after all these years and all the great memories, and the show goes on. In. That energy is just, it's just natural because it's, it comes from within as a fan of the Cavs. And, and everything that happens, good or bad, just like everyone else sitting in the arena and watching on television, you know, I feel it and I take that home. And, you know, you're part of it with everybody. And we have that all for one, one for all mentality, a city of underdogs, but we'll never say die. And that be the fight attitude is embraced by everyone. And I'm just so honored and so happy to be a part of that with everyone in the Cleveland area and, and Cavs fans all over the world. That's the game, folks, and your Cavaliers win. Hey, 2K TV fans, I'm Sean Pebbles, voice of the Cleveland Cavaliers, hosting your all-star special top plays. And hey, the dunk contest has nothing on this week's highlights. We're flying high with the best dunks you've sent us. Let's take off. First up in clutch time, Blasian Invasion intercepts with AI, giving Devin Booker the chance to fly. Play Now Online 30 sends this clip in from, well, Play Now Online figures. And LeBron James figures to order a two for one poster deal. Cocked it in! Fired it! Oh, 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 indeed! Getting practice on my court, Brian Armstrong looks competition ready with not just the contact slam, not just the step over but a full-on gymnastics routine. The Real Big Hoops rebounds in the program, reposts, and then gives all of us something to repost on social. A dunk on four has us all asking for more. Showing some wreck love with Dean Staines, Timing the putback dunk to bring rhythm and funk. And hey, that's worth clipping. Yeah, it's clipped. One good putback deserves another with Gibson the 1-1. One, one. And we snatch this one up from my career. Each step is perfectly placed to throw this miss back home.
Fix Bots is rocking in the dunk fest. On the left side, with the left hand. Bodies a defender with the power of a grizzly. Roar! Just Lion 2018 sacrifices two bodies to soar for this score. Let's get that ice ready for halftime, everybody. Whoa! So we need to check about eight rims for repairs. I got tasked with that paperwork somehow, so I better get that in. Remember, if you want a chance to see your best play on 2K TV, share them on social media using the hashtag 2K TV Wow. And I'll see you inside your next Cavs game in NBA 2K22. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you follow us on social media for more. We're at NBA 2K underscore 2K TV. And until next week, enjoy the game. Enjoy the game. Let's go get warm. Good evening and welcome. Glad to have you along for this Tuesday edition of the NBA on 2K Sports. This is Brian Anderson with Clark Kellogg and Grant Hill. And giving us the rundown from the sidelines, reporter Ali LaForce. Now a moment to take a look at the year-to-year -year scoring output and how it's been trending for LaMarcus Aldridge. And the scoring trend over the last few years has been going down a bit. That's not what you want, and I'm sure it's something he's well aware of. Well, this one's about to get going, but first, let's check in with Ali LaForce. Hey, Brian, you could say the alley-oop is perhaps the game's most exciting play. Ricky Rubio said that 80% of the credit should go to the finisher. LeBron James said, quote, the worst passes often lead to the best finishes. And Lonzo Ball said, when you have someone you trust to catch it, you can pretty much throw it wherever. Well, yeah, he's had some good ones, Ali. Thanks. And tonight, it's going to be bombs away, Clark. Both teams with terrific shooters. B.A., that lends itself to perhaps a lot of ebb and flow and a number of streaks in this game because both of these teams will let it fly from deep and they'll let it fly often. We'll see who gets hot at the right time to determine the outcome. And now let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Charlotte Hornets. Rozier the two with Hayward at the three. Mason Plumley out there with Miles Bridges. And it's Ball in at the point. And for the Raptors, Ananobi the three with Siakam at the four. Mitchell out there with Fred Van Vliet. And it's Whiteside in at the five, roaming the paint. Now here's Van Vliet, a dependable player on offense, giving them over 13 a game. Ball against Mitchell. Down to five on the shot clock. Shoots over Ball. And it's Mitchell, the miss. Rozier against Van Vliet. And the lamp is good off the glass. I'll tell you what, Rozier is a guy who doesn't back down. Matter of fact, this guy will take a hit and keep on ticking. Van Vliet outside. And there's a screen by Whiteside. Van Vliet, the pass to Whiteside. And it's Whiteside with a big finish. And Hassan Whiteside in this deep. He's great at getting inside and finishing with force. Hayward outside. Back to Bridges. Plumley a screen on Siakam. And Bridges, here we go. And that's out of bounds. It was last touched by Whiteside. And here are the Hornets now. Two open that time. Made it look easy. For free. First quarter and about a minute and a half in. Rozier against Van Vliet. Siakam outside. Three-pointer. And a great assist by Van Vliet as that one goes. <laughs> That's how you up the ante. Go right back at him. Little back and forth from long range. I love it. That's a terrific answer there. Now here's Ball. 
And you look at the numbers, currently around 22 and a half points a game. And that's a foul called on OG Hananobi. That's his first foul of the game. I have to admit, I mean, it's always a tough decision for the ref on the block charge call. No problem for me with that call. I mean, he was still sliding right there. to Plumley, Rozier with it, guarded by Van Vliet, for three, Bridges, and the Hornets, another three, when Rozier is seeing the floor that well, makes everything easier for him and his team, Clark, a utility player like Miles Bridges, who can more or less do it all, has the ability to be such a difference maker for a team, would be, I love the way this young man has improved, and what he brings to the table, he makes an impact because he plays well at both ends, and he's really added to his offensive game, he can shoot the mid-range jump shot out to the three-point line, and he's an excellent driver as well. Shooting two. The first free throw is good. An incredibly improved player. Pascal Siakam scored just four points a game as a rookie, then seven in his second year. But Siakam worked hard, becoming an all-star in year four, almost scoring 23 per game. Siakam hits them both. Free throw shooting is about mechanics, confidence, and your mental approach. He's locked in from there most every night. Up top ball. Checked by Mitchell. And it's blocked by Whiteside. And Whiteside takes great pride in rejecting shots. Outstanding at getting his arms up and denying shooters. First quarter of ball, almost two and a half minutes in. And that's a foul OG called on OG Ananobi. That's, his that's foul number two for him. You know, the question is, do you leave him in? A third now foul this early could spell four. trouble. Nuaba, he's checked in for Toronto. Nuaba. On defense, the Raptors. They trail by one. Rozier gets the bucket. To me, this is Rozier's game in a nutshell. A confident, quick-thinking, shoot-first point guard. Pass to Whiteside. On the wing, Mitchell. Four, three. They get the rebound. Whiteside. And it's slammed in by Whiteside. And their offensive rebounding is such a strength for them when he's on the floor. Yeah, he really helps them extend possessions, doesn't he? And you know, those second chance opportunities can be game changers. He represents so much value to this team because of what he does. Now that's how you use the screen right there. And it leads to a thunderous finish. That was nice. And you know, not enough help from the defense there to compensate. He gets a clean look, and that's exactly how you draw it up. Now here's Rozier. He has seven. One lay a screen on Mitchell. On the wing, Rozier. Checked by Mitchell. Five on the clock. Screen by Bridges. Here's Hayward. And they pick up two. And they've settled in quickly today. A nice flow and rhythm to their offense. Yeah, they're lasered in. I mean, really making the most of their possessions. Now here's Mitchell. Looking for his first basket still in this one. Here's Siakam. Here's Whiteside. Great start so far. Three of three in this one. Good things come to those who hustle. He creates the second chance opportunity. Ball against Mitchell. Pass to Hayward. Screen by Bridges. Hayward shot is off. Got the ball where he wanted it, but then got swarmed. And here's Siakam for three. Fires in the triple. Siakam's got eight points. The more Siakam uses the three-point shot, the more it helps his game. It makes him the all-around player he needs to be. Now here's Bridges. He has six. Pulls up. 
And ball with the basket on the assist by Plumley. Whatever the defense gives, that's what he takes. A sign of a skilled offensive player. Van Vliet outside. Mitchell up top, hounded by ball. And he got the whistle on the way up. So he'll be headed to the line for a pair. That's his first. And a huge part of any NBA team success is health, especially as we move to the middle part of the schedule. Well, we know injuries are a part of the game, and they shape every NBA season. Unfortunately, they can end a team season at any moment. Shooting two. Free throw is good for Mitchell. And the Hornets making a change here. Aldridge is checked in. Both free throws good for Mitchell. Charlotte's gone three of three from outside and looking sharp here in the first. Pass to Hayward. And here's Bridges. Now here's Aldridge. He's guarded by Nwaba. Aldridge misses. Despite the miss, those are the kind of looks coaches hope to create. Van Vliet outside. Now Whiteside. Over Hayward. Whiteside, the pass to Mitchell. Shoots over ball. And it's off the back of the rim. No good. The Hornets with a lead. Spins. Hayward outside. Ball, a screen on Whiteside. And Hayward, here we go. Hey, the slam by Hayward. Hayward using the bounce effectively there. That's part of his versatility as an offensive player. Ball against Mitchell. Pass to Van Vliet. This one for three. That one's good. Mitchell making the play. It's all knotted up. Pick works well there, but the defense left a lot to be desired. Yeah, that's not the defense you need. You've got to be tougher defensively. Hayward for three. And again, Charlotte with the triple. Seems like he can't miss right now, guys. I mean, completely in the zone this quarter. Time called here. The Raptors decide to talk it over. Coming off a win against the Blazers. They were lights out from beyond the arc, and they spaced the floor beautifully in that one. There's all kind of talk in the game today about stretching the floor, because when you do that, everything else just becomes a little easier. for the Raptors. Boucher's checked in for Whiteside. Forbes comes in for Van Vliet. And it's Flynn in for Mitchell.
Pass to Flynn. Back to Siakam. Here's Flynn. He's covered by Aldridge. Now Boucher. Six to shoot. Here's Siakam. No good. A bit long that time. Clean look from mid-range. Coach will probably want to run that play again. You know, B.J. Washington is very impressive. This young man hit the ground running when he stepped into the league back in 19. His debut performance, about 27 points and an NBA record for made three-pointers in a debut. Now here's Boucher, currently averaging five points a game. Here's Forbes. He's guarded by Washington. Pass to Forbes. Over Washington. And again, Toronto, no good. Well, when you talk about P.J. Washington getting off to a strong start, you also have to look at his defensive performance. I agree, B.A. I mean, two-way player definitely is P.J. Washington. Excellent instincts, and he's continued to impress as a shot blocker. Here's Flynn. What? No scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. And out of bounds. Out of bounds. Charlotte will have it. Charlotte ball. As we get deeper into the season, the Eastern Conference standings are really taking shape. Let's take a look. You take a look at the Hornets. Hasn't been a banner year thus far, but they're clinging to that eighth spot in the conference. And, of course, there's Toronto. Currently, they're five spots behind them. Right now, for Charlotte, they're really doing their best to rise through the rankings. Time will tell whether they can pull it off. You know, it's really hard to figure out exactly what's been missing, but there is something missing. It perhaps could be the system they're playing in. The Raptors have got 6 of 14 in so far. They need something good to happen here. Yeah, they've gone way too long without a score. Inside. Here's Nwaba. And Aldridge with the block. When Aldridge is in the neighborhood, you've got to be careful shooting it. I mean, proving there that he's capable of blocking shots. And Charlotte again with the bucket. Their ball movement on this run has been tremendous. It's led to a lot of good, clean open looks. With the timeout. Take a quick peek at the point guards who have been extremely disruptive defensively. LaMelo Ball, number one. I just love how he spends so much energy managing the game at the offensive end. It's really amazing that he's also one of the premier ball thieves in the league as well. Well, he should enjoy it as good as he is as a defender. I mean, if he's on you, you can't relax at all. He gives opposing point guards nightmares. Activity, energy are just too much for some guys to deal with. Here's Flynn. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game from him. And again, Toronto no good. Down low. And a foul called on the way up. So he'll take two from the free throw line. It's on David Nwaba. 
petty play to stop that easy layup right there. I mean, make him earn it at the line. Yeah, exactly. I mean, free throws are always better than a layup. So I'd agree with you there. And he drops the first. Both shots good from the strike. It can help a big man's game to hit those free throws. It keeps the defense from getting too aggressive. Here's Flynn, averaging around six a game. Boucher a screen on ball. Here's Flynn. Here he goes. Oh, it's blocked by Washington. What a nice job getting up to deny that shot. Washington showing you terrific anticipation on that rejection. McDaniels is checked in for Charlotte. Here's Boucher. Now quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Defensively, you have to stay connected to him on the perimeter. The Hornets with the lead. Washington outside. Pass to Martin. And stolen by Boucher. Now here's Nwaba. Here's Siakam from 13 ball with the rebound it's been that kind of quarter for him the shot has just been unreliable now here's Wagner ball a screen on Nwaba now here's Wagner he's guarded by Nwaba out of bounds it'll be Toronto's ball and a quick look here at some of the numbers for LaMelo Ball and over the last five games, his field goal percentage has increased. And you can make a case his confidence as well because of this. 149 left in the first quarter. Pass to Siakam. Here's Flynn. He's guarded by Washington. And here's Nwaba. Here's Siakam. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Ball's got his fourth rebound in this one. Certainly not the kind of night he was looking for at the offensive end, and it's had a ripple effect on the team. Toronto trailing. Here's Flynn. Pass to Nwaba. Here's Siakam. And it comes off the front of the rim. Oh, man, he can't get anything to fall. You can feel his frustration. And he's got to find other ways to contribute then because his shot making is not happening right now. Fourth in free throw percentage. Eighth in three-point shooting. And they've landed in the top ten for team scoring. They're making smart decisions on that end and presenting a challenge for most defenses. And the work they put in at the free throw line has been extremely valuable, especially at the end of games. Shooting two. And he makes a first. Siakam hits them both. Here's Charlotte, leading by five. They come into this one following the loss to Atlanta. I really think that L has to fall on their defense, or a lack thereof. Just not enough focus at that end of the floor. Yeah, and that's really inexcusable. I mean, there's just no way that you can justify that. When you don't put the work in on defense, you're going to end up on the losing end. 
McDaniels can't hit. So far, rebounding has been a focal point for them. And the trend they'd love to continue right through the next three quarters as well. Two second difference between shot and game clock. Out to the wing. Oh, there's the alley. And Washington powers it through. All you got to do is get open and balls handling the rock. He's going to find you. LaMelo's got incredible passing ability. It's Siakam with the drive. And there's a whistle. That goes on Pascal Siakam. That's his first foul of the game. A great job to establish position and square up. Excellent example of toughness and physicality on defense. Got his nose right in the middle of things and made a play. Ball with it. With two seconds left. Oh, rejected by Boucher. And so it's Charlotte closing out the quarter with a seven-point lead. The hustle they've shown on defense has been tremendous. Back after this. Well, in this era of load management, Gordon Hayward says often it's out of the player's hands. There's certain times where it's not our decision to not play. Um, there are certain times where guys want to play and the coaching staff and the training staff feels like it's in the team's best interest to not play. You know, there's certain injuries you really can't play with. Gordon trusting the team doctors, Grant. Yeah, and as a player, that's some tough luck with injuries. He's got to heed them when they tell him to rein it in. And for those of you just tuning in, second quarter action is where we are. All right, guys, some stats here. The scoring breakdown for Charlotte. They've definitely had a hot hand from three-point range to this point. Always nice to start out like that. They've established their presence in the paint tonight. Also, a lot of their scoring to this point coming from down low. And so in the game for the Hornets. Miles Bridges is out there with Lamarcus Aldridge. Then it's Terry Rozier. Then it's Jalen McDaniels. And it's Martin in at the shooting guard position. Now here's Rozier. 11 points for him last game against Atlanta. Over Mitchell. And he tries it off the glass, but it's no good. Toronto has got five of seven threes to drop here tonight. Van Vliet, the pass to Whiteside. Mitchell against Rozier. Let's it go from 11. Oh, it's blocked by Aldridge. Pass to Bridges. Now here's Aldridge. Outside for Rozier. And it's Toronto with a rebound. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Hornets team. Yeah, they beat this team in the season series last year. But what's that really saying? We got to be honest here, which is really the only way I roll. Neither of these teams are world beat. But you've got to start somewhere. The win tonight would be a step in the right direction. That's why you keep your head up. If the assist is there, you can pounce. Aldridge outside. The three is up. Toronto grabs the miss. Whiteside's got four rebounds now. Second quarter of play with around two minutes gone so far. Back to Mitchell. Pass to Ananobi. Five to shoot. Here's Whiteside. No! They're unable to get the tying basket there. And their free throws have dropped off in this quarter. They're settling for too many jump shots right now. I, I think you're right. I mean, up fake here or there, getting the ball inside. That's how you create high percentage offense. Now here's Rozier. He has seven. Shot to win the cold streak. Good. Rozier's got nine. Tell you what, he has been feeling it, guys. And the best game plan right now, it's elementary. Just keep feeding him. Let him eat. Well, you got to love the consistency of Terry Rozier's shooting. I mean, he does take a lot of shots, especially from the three line, but he's got a habit of knocking them down, too. Get a free t shirt. Let's see it, fans. Ladies and gentlemen, your North Side Bruce.
Look who's coming on the board. Come on and get out for your North Star crew. in for McDaniels. A look at how all-star voting is going this far. And so much fun to see the tallies start to come in. See how things start to look. And you look at Rogier. He's racked up a nice share of votes. But there are still a few players ahead of him in the East. Well, it's a loaded East this season. So many guys in the mix for a spot on the all-star team. He's absolutely one of them. And it's hard to contain the excitement as we look ahead to what promises to be an outstanding all-star weekend. Now here's Van Vliet. Last game for him, he picked up 13. Can't connect from short range. The Hornets have gotten nothing to go out of five attempts so far this quarter. Here's Rozier. And no good. And Toronto will go the other way with it. Van Vliet outside. On the wing, Mitchell. Shoots over Rozier. And again, no good by Toronto. Pass to Aldridge. And it's blocked by Whiteside. Rozier against Mitchell. Boucher outside. Whiteside down low. He's got six. Got it. And you like the balance here. Not just falling in love with the three ball. Rogier against Mitchell. Rogier, the pass to Aldridge. Here's Martin. There's a screen by Aldridge. Bridges outside. Releases. And once again, off the mark by Charlotte. The Raptors have gone three for seven here in the second quarter. Van Vliet outside. Drives to the hoop. Oh, it misses. Had a chance to tie it. And he's going for the hoop here. And stolen by Boucher. And an Obi for three. That one's good. Mitchell making the play. Mitchell's got three assists tonight. All right, guys, let's get your take on the hustle stats for the Raptors. Their frenetic defense has been impressive. Putting ball handlers on the defensive and turning them over as well. You know, adding on to that, they've done a great job of challenging and changing shots in this first half, and they've gotten some blocks as well. Here's Van Vliet following the bucket by the Hornets. It doesn't go for him. Nice D from Bridges. Charlotte has gone 0 for 2 from outside in the second quarter. Toronto grabs the miss. Whiteside's got six rebounds now in the game. Ananobi passes to Van Vliet. That shot, no good. He's lost his rhythm completely this quarter, but he's determined to stay after him. And the basket by Bridges. And last season, the NBA expanding eligibility for two-way players. Clark, great to see those who seized the opportunity and secured full NBA contracts. Yeah, B.A., I could not agree with you more. I mean, it's all about performance. And when guys show they're capable of playing at the highest level, they should have that chance. And I love the flexibility of the rosters, giving hungry, talented players an opportunity to earn their way onto the big league team. The Raptors making a switch here. Forbes has checked in. And a change for the Hornets. Plumlee's checked in. Six on the shot clock. On the wing, Forbes. No good with the triple. Yeah, you know, he usually makes you pay from that range. To the middle. And the layup is good after a nice lead pass. And now a five-point Hornet lead. Boy, look how easily Bridges shoots through the contact there. I mean, his mechanics are strong, as is his body. Pass to Boucher. Stolen by Bridges. And there's the foul. It's on Chris Boucher. That's his first foul. Yeah, 
he tried to gain position, but couldn't quite get there. Yeah, he was one step late that time. Flynn, he's checked in for Mitchell. Washington's checked in for Charlotte. LaMelo Ball comes in for Martin. And so it's Charlotte with it. Ball outside. To the inside. Tries the nine-footer. Toronto grabs the miss. Here's Flynn. Well, he hasn't put up any points yet in this one. Pass to Forbes. A shot to stop the drought. Can't hit that one. And Charlotte going the other way now. They're off to battle the Pacers after this one. And they'll be playing at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. That'll be the second of two games on the road. <laughs> They're really working the paint now. Toronto's gone two of four from beyond the arc in the second quarter. Here's Flynn. Whiteside with a screen on ball. Here's Flynn. Plumley pulls down the board. Here's Charlotte. Good momentum. Eight straight points. Rogier finds ball. Outside for Rogier. Plumley a screen. Just five on the clock. Ooh, white side with the defensive effort. Toronto has gotten six of ten three-pointers to drop. Glenn on the attack. High-quality look as he sinks it. Glenn's got his first points of the game. The Hornets with the lead. Pass the ball. Plumley a screen. Ball passes to Plumley. Back to ball. Shot clock at six. Washington, a screen on Whiteside. Charlotte needs to get one up in a hurry. Here comes Toronto on the push. Oh, a clear look for Ananobi. Let's it go from the baseline and nails it. And now just a three-point Hornet lead. He came up dry offensively in the first, but it looks like he's ready to turn it around. Ball passes to Hayward. Back to ball. On the wing, Rozier. Washington a screen. From 11 feet away, Rozier can't get it to go. The Raptors shooting just 33% so far in this game. Here's Forbes. Well, he hasn't scored yet, but I'm sure that'll change. Out left to the wing. Here's Boucher for three. It's rebounded by Charlotte. We know how good a shooter he is. It's frustrating for him when he's not able to knock down that kind of wide open look. Washington finds ball. Rozier with it. Plumley passes to Rozier. Shoots over Ananobi. And once again, off the mark by Charlotte. Toronto trailing. To the paint. Pass to Flynn. Whiteside with a screen on ball. Here's Flynn. Oh, it's blocked by Washington. Here's Ball. And Whiteside with a block. And they'll keep possession. Here's Forbes. Back to Flynn. Now Whiteside. 151 left in the first half. Here's Flynn. Hounded by Ball. Off target at the rim. Charlotte has gone 5 of 8 from outside the three-point line in this one. Off the mark and the drought continues. Toronto's gone 2 of 5 from deep here in the second. Pass to Flynn. Minute 15 left in the second period. Shoots from 14. Plumley pulls down the board. Plumley's got his fifth rebound in this one. This has been a tough quarter for him and a challenging game for this team. Boy, lock into that focus from Washington there. Love the body control, too. Excellent. 
Here's Flynn, hounded by Ball. Flynn on the attack, and it's out of bounds. The Raptors able to retain possession here. Pence changes here for the Raptors. Pascal Siakam, he's checked in for Whiteside, and it's Nawaba in for Boucher. Wagner's checked in for Charlotte. McDaniels comes in for Hayward. There's 48 seconds left in the second quarter. They're punishing those late defensive rotations. Getting good looks inside throughout the half. Washington a screen. Rozier, the pass to Washington. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Washington's got his third basket on the night right there. You know, Washington brings terrific strength to his inside game. He plays with quite a bit of force and fought his way into that shot. It's Siakam with the drive. Can't cash in the 10-footer. Charlotte's gone 0 for 2 from outside in the second quarter. Out of bounds. It'll be Toronto's ball. Hurts to see that kind of mistake. Coach is going to be on him about that one. Toronto has gotten 6 of 11 threes to go in this game. There's the triple. No good that time. And a pretty tightly contested game here as we end the first half. It's the Hornets. They're up by five. All right, now let's check in with Allie LaForce. Allie, what do you have? Thanks, guys. I'm alongside Coach James Brago. And, Coach, a nice effort so far. What's the key here in the second half, though? Stay with our defense. That's the key. When we have our opportunities, push the pace. But we got to get stops, push it at them, and uh, keep in a rhythm offensively at our point. Defense leads to offense. Thanks, Coach. All right, good stuff, Allie. And we'll get back to the action at the start of the third quarter. And with All-Star Weekend approaching quickly, here's an update on how the dunk contest contenders are shaping up. And you talk about dunk contests, some great performances throughout the years. Shaq, whose did you prefer? Kenny's or mine, you know, the elevator, Ernie Johnson. Oh boy, here we go. Ernie, don't ask me about the dunk contest. You can ask me about game dunks, putting fools through the rims, elbow sandwiches. Oh, now I'm getting hungry. Care for some barbecue chicken? Barbecue chicken, I like. What do you prefer on your elbow sandwiches? I'll take some barbecue. All right, now let's get into our game. It ended up being a strong first half for the Charlotte Hornets. They put a big effort in the rebounding battle, working to corral every miss. That's the hustle you love to see. If they can maintain this approach, it'll give them the edge in other areas of the game. Appreciate you joining us. It's been our distinct pleasure, and I mean that. Let's now take you back over to the third quarter with Brian Anderson. As we get into this third quarter, as we've seen so far, neither team able to create much separation on the scoreboard. You know, one of the stories here, Terry Rozier. Man, is he getting it done today? They've leaned on him to provide a lot of offense, and that's how he likes it. And you know what? They've come at him a few different ways defensively, and nothing has slowed him down. And Fleet teams with Ananobi on the perimeter. Pascal Siakam out there with Hassan Whiteside. And it's Mitchell in at the point guard position. So that's the five in the game for Toronto. Now here's Siakam. He's got 10. Oh, a clear foul there on the missed shot. So he'll get a pair at the line. It's going to be on Miles Bridges. You can see the length come into play, whether Siakam's facing up or back to the basket. Two shots. That's good from Siakam. Huh? 
That one's no good. The Hornets with the lead. Bridges passes to Rozier. Pass the ball. Here's the three. Sinks it from distance. Ball's got five. Well, I like the fact that this is something Ball continues to work on, that deep shot of his. He knows he's got to be a threat from deep to expand his game. Now here's Ananobi. Give him eight points now. Van Vliet outside. Now Whiteside. Pass to Siakam. Goes up and lays it in nice and easy. He's got 13. And just using every inch of his incredible wingspan, Siakam is able to make some creative finishes. Hayward outside. Back to ball. Hayward outside. Off target from outside. Toronto's gone 6 for 12 from deep so far in this game. Here's Siakam. It's hauled in by Hayward. The Hornets have gone just one of three in the second half. Ball outside. Hayward against Siakam. Back to ball. Plumley a screen for three. Bridges. It's hauled in by the Raptors. Right side's got rebound number eight now. Siakam pass to Van Vliet. Mitchell with the ball. There's a screen by Whiteside. Back to Van Vliet. There's the drive. And he gets that one. Van Vliet's got his third basket of the night. How about that wonderful floater he has? Showing off an exquisite touch. Siakam against Bridges. Hayward for three. Hits the three-pointer. They've been pretty lax with their perimeter defense, giving up a lot of three-pointers. And their defensive rotations have been non-existent. And, you know, with Hayward, you get a little bit of everything. He's a stat sheet stuffer. He's got good instincts for moving the ball. He moves well without it. But he also can be effective on the glass. Ladies and gentlemen, your north side proves. in for Charlotte. Martin comes in for Rozier. And we always like to take this chance to show you the scoring leaders from the last 10 days of action. Number five is LaMelo Ball. He's been on an absolute tear offensively. He's found something that's working for him and he's sticking to it. minutes into this second half and again no good by Toronto he's been ice cold tonight and you know you look at the scoreboard guys they really could have used his contribution pass to Aldridge clock at six over Mitchell Aldridge misses take what's available use the fadeaway when the defenders there on it 
On the wing, Mitchell. Offensive rebound. Here's Whiteside. And Aldridge with the block. Up top, Bridges. He's covered by Siakam. And here's Hayward. Bridges down low. He's covered by Siakam. And it's Bridges with the jam. That athletic ability gets Bridges to the rim there. He almost uh, totally shrugged off the defense. Van Vliet outside. Pass to Whiteside. Van Vliet outside. That shot off the mark. Now Charlotte takes it the other way. Hayward outside. Back to Martin. Here's Aldridge. Guarded by Van Vliet. Aldridge with the bucket. And now a 10-point Charlotte lead. You know, sometimes overwhelming presence. Aldridge is a handful to deal with because of his height, strength, and length. Oh, and he got fouled on his way up. He'll head to the line to shoot two. <laughs> no debate there. He, he got hammered. Second Blatant contact. Straightforward call. Simple. At the line. And a breakdown here, guys. The hustle stats for the Hornets. Contested shots and block shots. They're bread and butter defensively. They're giving up no easy looks. Another thing, they haven't missed a beat on the fast break in either half tonight. Two. Two. That free throw misses. And Grant, in 2015, you became part owner of the Atlanta Hawks. How pleased were you to see their performance in last year's playoffs? Well, it was incredible. So much fun to see this team come together, rally, and have an incredible run in this past postseason. Now, as a broadcaster, you don't want to have a ruining interest, but I'll confess, it was definitely special to see. Good on the second one. Charlotte has gone 7 of 13 from downtown so far in this game. Washington, a screen on Mitchell. Ball no good for Toronto. They've gotten only two of seven shots to go in the third quarter. It's Siakam with the drive. Oh, it's blocked by Washington. Ball against Van Vliet. Now here's Ball. Guarded closely. Boy, he hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Hey, they're just getting pushed around inside. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. Second and three-point field goal percentage. Third and steals. And they've got a spot in the top five in free throw shooting. Defenses hate to send these guys to the line because they know they'll probably pick up the free points. And about their three-point shooting, it's the consistency that strikes me. They're not ranked number two in the league because they're streaky. First free throw is good. Nwaba, he's checked in for Toronto. Siakam hits them both. For Charlotte, they've gone 5 of 11 in this third quarter. Inside, here's Aldridge. Toronto grabs the miss. Whiteside's got 11 rebounds in the game. And here's Siakam for three. And again, Toronto no good. Defense better watch out. They better be alert. Because this guy can make threes, as we saw in the first half. And just not letting up at all. I mean, you have to love this approach. You want to get the ball to the guys who make plays. If it's working, keep working it. That's what I say. Keep the pressure on them. Now here's Van Vliet. 
Seven points in the game. That one's wide left. And here's Bridges. Pass to Aldridge. Washington against Mitchell. And it's Washington missing. Toronto has gone 0 for 2 from outside here in the third. Nuaba finds Siakam. The three ball. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touched by Siakam. And the Raptors with some changes. Boucher's checked in for Whiteside. Forbes comes in for Fred Van Vliet. And it's Flynn in for Mitchell. And a change for the Hornets. Wagner's checked in for Bridges. Now here's Ball. Tight defense on him. And he gets it to go. Ball's got five points now in the quarter. You know, because Ball is so skilled, defenders try to get physical with him, rough him up a bit, but it doesn't phase him. That rarely works against Ball. Here's Flynn. Washington grabs the miss. Washington's got four rebounds now. Pass to Ball. Now here's Wagner. Washington inside. Siakam pulls down the board. Siakam's got his fifth rebound in this one. Here's Forbes. Boy, he's been patient so far. Nothing yet on the scoreboard. These calls can be so difficult for officials to make. Yeah, but in this case, I think you got it right. The defender was still moving there and never really had good legal guarding position. He wasn't set. And that was a great replay we just saw of our mobile one block. Yeah, good offense comes from great defense. This lead is only getting stronger with plays like that. Here's Flynn. Outside Nuaba. Four on the clock. On target from range. Nuaba's got his first three points of the game. The defense takes a chance, leaves him open at the arc, and he capitalizes. Out of bounds, it'll be Toronto's ball. Well, that's a moment he'd like to archive. Embarrassing lapse of judgment there. Toronto's gone only one of four from three-point land in the third quarter. Here's Forbes. Pass to Flynn. Outside for Boucher. Here's Flynn. Hounded by ball. Shot clock at three. Fires the three. Flynn's shot is off. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they've rebounded the ball tremendously well. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up, shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. And, you know, the defense to me looked like they were okay to let him prove he could make that shot. And here's Siakam for three. Ball with the rebound. Ball's got nine rebounds now. There's a screen by Aldridge. And it's Ball with the three. Ball's got eight here in this quarter. Tell you what, guys, this has clearly been his half. I and mean, he's getting to a spot, shooting the ball with confidence. Excellent turnaround for him. Here's Flynn. Over Washington. And again, no good by Toronto. Here's McDaniels. He's guarded by Nuaba. Here's Washington. Count that one. He's now five for eight. And their offensive game plan is clear. Get it inside and go to work. A difficult situation for Toronto. Siakam outside over Aldridge. It's rebounded by Wagner. This has not been his best quarter. You know, guys, it seems to me as though he's over anxious. He seems to be pressing, trying too hard, moving too fast. Just needs to calm himself down and wait for good shots. Here's Forbes. Looking for his first basket still in this one. Here's Flynn. Looking to get back on track. 
count the basket. Hey, that right there was a lot of confidence given the size of the disadvantage there. And you know what he does. I mean, in the NBA, you've got to have ways to score over defenders of all sizes. Well, he's really been on a roll this quarter. Seems like everything he throws up is finding bottom. Boy, they need something to go to regain some confidence. No question. Way too many empty possessions for them. Good on the shot. Flynn's got eight points. And, you know, coaches will take possessions like that all day long. Phenomenal use of the screen there. And the Hornets call time here. They've been committing a lot of turnovers, and I imagine that's exactly what they're talking about right now. They need to tighten it up. It's a T-shirt for Nanza. Make some noise. All right. Look who's coming on the court. Come on and get back for your North Star crew. Making a change here. Rozier's checked in. Let's check in on the free throw shooting. The best in the league. Third is Pascal Siakam. He's not a guy you want to foul. He's so calm at the line. Sinks his free throws with ease. There's a minute 34 left in the third quarter. Ball outside. Washington a screen. Ball no good. Tell you what, the defense was lucky there. I mean, leave him that open from range, he'll typically knock it down. Oh, got that one up quick. Flynn's got 10 points in the game. Boy, nice job that time, guys, from Forbes. Spotting the wide open man and dropping the dime. And it's the Hornets with the ball. The Raptors making their last shot. One minute left in the third. Pass to Siakam. Here's Flynn. Boucher on the screen. Flynn's shot is off. The Hornets shooting at about 44% so far. Ball with it. Rozier outside. It's McDaniels on the wing. Knocks down the long J. McDaniels got himself going with a triple. His first basket of the game. Three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Boucher on the screen. Oh, it's blocked by Washington. And that's out of bounds. Toronto will retain possession. Check the in for the away team. Sixteen seconds left in the third quarter. And Ananobi gets it to go. Pick works well there, but the defense left a lot to be desired. Yeah, that's not the defense you need. You've got to be tougher defensively. Here's Forbes. And the wrap 
Raptors, another three. Like the assertiveness, and that comes from having the green light to shoot off the pass. Forbes, one of the very best shooters off the pass or drill three. And so it's the Charlotte Hornets with a nine-point cushion at the end of the quarter, just pounding the painted area. That's helped him build an advantage. We'll be right back. And it's time now to bring you our State Farm Assist to the Game. You know, I'm kind of stoked that this was a choice because I love this pass. A remarkable find. He put his court vision on full display. Yeah, and with the accuracy to go along with that vision. I mean, he put the ball in the absolute perfect spot. That's how you orchestrate it. It's the fourth quarter, Brad. The fourth quarter has arrived. So good to have you with us. Toronto trailing. On the court for the Hornets. Mason Plumley out there with Miles Bridges. Then there's Wagner. Then it's Terry Rozier. And it's Ball in at the point. Now here's Mitchell. And out of bounds. Charlotte will have it. And a chance now to look at the schedule for the Charlotte Hornets. On Wednesday, they'll go up against the Pacers in Indiana. And then on Friday, they'll face off against Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers. And for that game against Los Angeles, they'll want to come out fighting in that one. They'll be big-time underdogs, but anything can happen. Van Vliet against Rozier. It's tipped! Outside, Nwaba. Van Vliet outside. Pass to Ananobi. Beyond the arc. Good. And Van Vliet gets the assist. Van Vliet's got three assists tonight. That's three in a row from out there now, so they've got to do a better job contesting. Bridges outside. And an Obi with a double team. Wagner for three. Pure from three-point range. And the Hornets lead by nine. And looking to shoot as many threes as possible. This kind of confidence, impressive to see. Love the mentality there, I tell you. I know I've never coached, but man, playing to win and being aggressive even with the lead as opposed to being safe and going into prevent offense, I'll take the former all day long. Play to win. Here's Bridges, and it's Bridges with the jam. Flipping the switch right now. There's no stopping Miles Bridges. He knows it, and his teammates do too. Van Vliet, the pass to Mitchell. The put back. And they'll get another chance. Right side, Guava. Pass to Mitchell. Six on the shot clock. There's a screen by Whiteside. Deflected! Now ball, down low. The ball's knocked loose. Oh, stolen by Ananobi! Outside Mitchell. Now Whiteside. Shoots over Rozier. And the Raptors miss again. That's tipped. On the wing, Nwaba. From deep. Drains the triple. A dozen consecutive points off of threes. This defense looks rattled. And guys, now that they're rolling from out there, the defense has to really get up into them. You've got to almost be in their jerseys to try to deny those looks. Now here's Rozier. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. It's impressive how they've overcome his cold streak tonight. Everyone stepping in to fill the gap. Outside Mitchell. It's blocked. They're still looking for his first bucket. You can't put all their struggles on him tonight, but he's been brutal. The kick out to Ball. Pass to Bridges. Oh, and there's the whistle on the shot. So two free throws for him coming up. 
That's his well, I tell you what, you got to like the aggressiveness there from Bridges because he forced the defense that time to commit the foul. Shooting for Sharp. Miles Bridges at the line for two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. First one falls for him. You know, one of the things that endeared Miles Bridges to his college coach was he was a superstar in talent, but played with a blue-collar mindset. Aldridge has checked in for Charlotte. Hayward comes in for Wagner. That's good as he hits both shots. Over three and a half minutes through the final quarter now. Fans lead against Rozier. And here's Mitchell. Over ball. And it's Mitchell. The miss. You have to credit their effort. I mean, they've done an amazing job on the glass. And it's been a well-rounded performance. I mean, strong rebounding has certainly been, at the, been at, the, at the center of it, but it's been good on a number of levels. Now here's Mitchell. Pass to Whiteside. Back to Mitchell. And out of bounds. Charlotte will have it. Charlotte Ball. Here's Ball. Hayward outside over Nuaba. And Hayward gets it to go on the assist by Ball. Ball's got assist number seven tonight. Outside Mitchell. Pass to Whiteside. Back to Mitchell. Shot to stop the run. Hornets with the rebound. Hayward's got five rebounds tonight. He is zero for his last however many this quarter, guys. Might need to get him out and let him settle down a bit here. Now here's Bridges. Ball passes to Rozier. Hayward against Nwaba. Great D that time from Nwaba. Toronto's gone two of three from beyond the arc here in the fourth. Pass to Mitchell. Here's Whiteside. Just five to shoot. Mitchell, the pass to Whiteside. Yep, that one goes. That gives him a double-double in this one. He's shooting well, doing his best to keep this offense in gear. But he hasn't had a lot of support. Mitchell against Ball. Rozier outside. Bridges, a screen on Van Vliet. And Rozier, here we go. Sweet little floater. And the Hornets lead by 15. How about the touch by Terry Rozier on that floater? That is not an easy shot, folks. Matter of fact, I think it's one of the hardest shots in the game. They've shown the power inside. Their rebounding effort has been sensational. Guys, that's putting it mildly. I mean, they've been absolutely dominant. Ananobi passes to Mitchell. Whiteside with a screen on Bridges. Hayward with a steal. Three-pointer Rozier. Yes, sir. And it's Ball with the assist that time. For three. Ball's got eight assists in the game. One this half, two for the game. Staying active from beyond the arc. Now here's Mitchell. Now here's Van Vliet. Whiteside with a screen on Rozier. Looking to end this cold spell. And an Obi for three. Nails it from three. And an Obi's got nine points here in the second half. You gotta tip your hat to him. He's doing all he can to keep them in the game. He still hasn't missed. Rozier against Van Vliet. 
Pass to Hayward. There's a screen by Aldridge. Shot clock at six. Hayward's shot is off. Toronto has gotten three threes to fall out of four attempts here in the fourth. Mitchell finds Van Vliet. So it'll be two free throws. He was fouled in the act of shooting. It's on LaMarcus Aldridge. First team foul. At the line for Toronto. Fred Van Vliet taking two shots. Free throw good from Van Vliet. And the Raptors making a change here. Siakam's checked in. And the Hornets making a change here as well. Plumley's checked in for Aldrich. He's perfect from the line this time. The Hornets have gone 6 for 11 here in the fourth quarter. Van Vliet against Rozier. Plumlee, a screen on Van Vliet. On the attack, Rozier. And it's blocked by Whiteside. To the middle. Here's Siakam. Hornets with the rebound. They led by as many as 18. Rozier outside. Back to ball. From deep. Oh, he gets it to go. 7 of 13 now. All of a sudden, he's balling. Halftime adjustments successful so far. And lead against Rozier. Oh, nice D from Rozier. The Hornets have gotten seven to go out of 13 attempts during the fourth. There's Ball with a three. Here's Plumley. The third shot of the possession finally falls for him. And the Hornets lead by 18. And that's a backbreaker for the defense. I mean, offensive boards like that run momentum against you. Well, you know, that's the way it's going to be for them today, fellas. You can't sustain any momentum. I like whenever Siakam is going at the defense because it makes them compromise like right there. At the line for your Raptors. Pass down, Siakam. Two shots. First one at the line is good. See Occam hits them both. Well, you have to like how he's challenging the defense now in the second half. Getting to the line for a lot of free throw opportunities. Rozier outside. Over Van Vliet. Rozier can't get it to go. Toronto's gotten three threes to fall out of four attempts here in the fourth. Van Vliet outside. Shot clock at five. From behind the arc. It's rebounded by Charlotte. Ball's got 11 rebounds in the game. You know, after connecting on one three-pointer in the first half, he hasn't netted another one since. Here's Rozier. And that one hits the back iron. Toronto shooting a low 30% from the floor. Pass to Mitchell. And here's Siakam. He's guarded by Bridges. Bridges against Siakam. From 11 feet away, Plumley pulls down the board. 
Plumlee's got nine rebounds in the game. Boy, he's getting it done. Ball against Mitchell from 10 feet away. The shot off that time. And it's Toronto taking it the other way. Siakam, pass to Mitchell. And Anobi with it. To the inside. Here's Siakam. Ball with the rebound. Not sure if he just ran out of gas or what. He's been awful ever since the second half started. Not even been a factor. Bridges, a screen on Whiteside. Here's Hayward. It's hauled in by the Raptors. Whiteside's got rebound number 15 here tonight. It looks like it'll be a big win for them here. Time to just cruise to the end of the game and chalk up the victory for the Hornets. In today's game, you need to shoot it well from three. That was the difference maker. Exactly. And the defense didn't rotate out quickly enough to disrupt their shooters. And they played well tonight, picking up win number 24 of the year. And having this win on the books might give them a little mental advantage the next two times these squads meet. The stats tell us that the winner of the first game is a big favorite to come out on top in the overall series. And no question this was a team effort. But you have to love how big a night this was for LaMelo Ball. Gotta respect the leadership he showed today. Made great reads and distributed the ball accordingly. Here's the Occam following the bucket by the Hornets. 29 seconds left in the fourth quarter here. Three-pointer, Van Vliet. And the three-pointer goes. You're leaving him all alone? <laughs> Good luck. He's going to drill that every time. Pass to Bridges. Bridges, a screen on Ananobi. Hayward, the pass to Bridges. Oh, stolen by Ananobi. To the paint. Stolen by Ball. Bridges, right side, and he's going to the line for two. The official saw contact while he was going up. It goes on Fred Van Vliet. Miles Bridges taking two shots. Shooting two. That's good from Bridges. And so he hits both. And it's the Raptors with the ball. And so Charlotte takes this one by a big margin. To walk into enemy territory and deliver a performance like that, that says a lot about this squad. They really came in looking confident and didn't let anything shake them. This is what a dominant team looks like. All right, Allie's ready to go. She's courtside. Hey, Allie. Gordon, congratulations. As you look to lead this team to sustained success, wins like this have to be encouraging. Yeah, it felt good. Uh, it was a great team win for us. Uh, we came into this one with a lot of focus. We really guarded them. I think that allowed us to get good shots on the other end. So, um, you know, they're going to be better. They're going to be able to knock down some shots they missed tonight. But good effort by us. Offense starts on defense. Thanks so much. All right, Allie, good stuff there. Thanks for that. Thank you for joining us. That'll do it for now. For Clark Kellogg, Ali LaForce, and Grant Hill, this is Brian Anderson. Last but not least, here is your New Balance player of the game, LaMelo Ball.